what do you like better? Analog, digital, how do you take the sort of continuum of, and to add to that, lots of um, complimentary questions from the audience about, um, you know, what, what do you still use that's analog based gear? Um, <clears throat> let's start there. It's a great question. Well, my, my, my studio, of course, is, uh, has a, an analog, uh, analog desk. It's a Rupert Neve desk, latest generation, just uh, one of his uh, latest design just before he died. And, um, uh, of course, I don't, I, I don't have a tape machine in sight anymore. <laughs> um, there, there are programs which uh, seek to emulate the sound of tape. Um, I've never actually, to, to date, found it necessary to use one of those. I'm I'm very happy with uh, working with a DAW, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever, um, provided that I am still going through in the chain, going through my desk, going through my analog console, and uh, the the whole my whole experience is, is is a tactile one. I love push faders up and down. And, uh, you know, I, w I don't think I uh, did 50 years of training to click a mouse all day. So <laughs> I'm much happier uh, pushing faders up and down and adding effects, uh, looking, looking at EQ, compression, reverbs, all that stuff. It's, um, I, I did do a couple of albums which were in the box and, you know, uh, very, very much computer Based, but uh, when I got when I got the new console, I said, "What what what was I thinking?" <laughs> I really did. I, I'm, I'm so very attached to uh, the analog console as a as something that, that will be all, always be a part of my life. I'm certain of it. So to bring it back to our friend Luis, a student in the Bronx, who asked, and and uh, you may or may not have a position or a specific answer for him, but uh, Luis said, "What's better, digital?" Or analog? Where do you prefer to be? Um, I I've always been a great believer in uh, you know make the best use of what you have. Mm. Um, the uh, the very best digital is is considerably better than than your average digital. You've got good converters and uh, uh, you know uh, the, the latest digital technology. It, it's it's hard to fault it, really. I, I, I've, uh, I, I know that um, some people say, you know, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll record everything on tape, and then we'll, then we'll do the editing in digital, and then we'll go back to the analog tape to mix it from. I think that's perhaps taking things a, a little far. But um, I, I'd be, I'd be perfectly happy to go back to a, do a session on on, uh, on a twenty-four track analog tape machine. But it's a lot of work. You have to line up the, you have to line up the uh, the tracks uh, every day, especially if you're using Dolby. Although they all have to be aligned. And uh, uh, frankly, um, Pro Tools is so much faster. Uh, or I, I'm generalizing with DAWs, but DAWs are so much faster than than winding a tape machine backwards and forwards. I mean, to to locate, you know. Let, let's let's re-record the second verse. Oh, I've got to find that on, on, on you know where that is on the analog tape. Whereas on a DAW screen, you just click click the point where the second verse starts, and and there's and you can do you know th three takes of a line of a vocal in ten seconds. Unheard of in analog, analog mm. circles. So oh. I, I just I just love the speed of of, of, of digital, uh, and I I think every day it becomes less and less of uh, what some might, might regard as a compromise. I think, I think a few years down the line, we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, laughing at ourselves and saying, what were we worried about? You know, I'm, uh, digital recordings sound absolutely fine. And if you want them to sound exactly like an analog recording, we'll be able to do that. Hmm. Uh, a, related, uh, a related question that came in from a student in Europe was, in fact, when you think about the differences between mixing 30 years ago and today, um, here's the student's question. Are there um, techniques that, you, that have hung with you 
over the decades that you've been working, you know, things that you might have done 30 years ago that you still employ regularly in the projects that you're working on today? I don't really think I've changed my basic approach to, to mixing at all. Um, I, uh, one, one thing that Jeff Emmerich taught me was to, uh, rather than start with, like so many people do, start with the bass and drums, then add the rhythm guitars, add the keyboards, then the vocals and so on, so on, so on. I, I, I learned from him that uh, it was a good idea to balance up everything in the first stages of a mix except the bass and drums. And uh, that's, uh, that's a technique that I've stuck with for, for decades, literally. And uh, I still find that uh, the best way to go. So the basic approach, my basic approach to, to mixing really hasn't changed at all over the years. I think what's interesting is that mixing used to be, you know, an activity, you know, when you had, when I worked at Trident and it was on essentially a 46 track uh, session, you know, there'd be two desks in the, in the studio and probably eight people on the mix. And, you know, we would mix for 10 hours or whatever, you know, I mean, it was a, and then eventually, you know, mopping sweated brows, we would end hoping to God that we'd got a, a decent mix. Nowadays, a mix is just simply, you know, the the end of a pro, of a continual process, and there's no kind of activity. And I, I always feel, and Alan, I think because he works, he mixes using a board, you know, his his uh, knee board. He has more of that kind of hands-on adjusting levels right until the last moment aspect to his mixing. But I think most people don't have that. If you're just working in the box, you know, a mix is done when you click and say, you know, it, it's done, as it were. It's not kind of, you're not working up to a mix. And I think there is something lost in that for me. Um, I think the mm -hmm. excitement that you get from that real-time mixing in any way that you can sort of replicate or put yourself, give yourself a time limit to do something will maybe add just a little bit more excitement because perfection which of course you can get is not necessarily perfection. So, you know, perfection is a, is a relative thing compared, you know, related to how much time you've got to do it. And yeah, um, I mean, it, it is, um, it is a performance. If you don't have right. automation or you don't right. have uh, the uh, flying faders or, uh, you know, a computer to adjust levels of a particular track at a particular time, um, it, it does become a performance. And it, uh, I, I certainly remember uh, on several occasions with uh, many of the artists I worked with, you know, you needed four or five hands on, on the console to, right. and mm -hmm. you just prayed that you didn't, you didn't forget all the things you had to do during the course of each mix. Oh my um, God, I forgot to pan the tambourine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's... <laughs> <laughs> 